Let's make a pocket journal out of oil tan leather and put a logo on the front of it. You didn't know you could do that, did you? It's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna to be taking something that we learned in a previous video, how to stitch together the binding of a book, and we're gonna make this pocket journal. So the first thing that we need to talk about is the type of leather that we're gonna be using. This is Crazy Horse Leather, and Crazy Horse is a type of oil tan leather. So you've heard of veg tan, you've heard of chrome tan, Oil tan is more like a chrome tan. In fact, it is a chrome tan, but it's also been impregnated with oils and waxes. That makes it more supp supple. It makes it uh, somewhat water repellent a lot of times. And that's what we're gonna be using today. So one of the big things with oil tan and chrome tan is that they don't hold impressions. Can you get it to take an impression? Yes, but it's really not gonna hold it for very long. About the longest I've ever been able to get one to hold an impression is about a week. Eventually it's like a sponge, it just, it, it releases that impression. But today, I'm gonna show you how you can add some visual interest to your projects that you make with oil tan leathers. So what's first? Well, we need a piece of leather that will work for our cover. Now my text block, which is the stack of signatures, the pages, it's gonna be five and a half inches tall, if you will. So I need a, um, a piece of leather that's gonna be six inches. Well, we got five inches worth of paper, we got six inches worth of leather, that's gonna give us a quarter inch margin on the top and bottom. Now, one thing real quick is we wanna make sure that the leather is long enough to wrap around the end of the book. So we've got a nice little flap there to kind of close the book. So make sure whatever piece of leather that you cut out is long enough to do that. I used a scrap piece of leather for mine. I wanted a natural raw edge on that flap. Everything else got a nice clean cut to it, but that flap, I wanted it to have the natural raw edge. And back in the day, Chuck showed us a technique to get that natural raw edge, and it works fantastically. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Essentially, you just wanna cut through the top layer of the leather, then tear it along that cut. That's gonna give us that frayed edge that we're looking for. Now, one quick tip. This is one of the few areas, one of the few techniques where I don't want a brand new blade. If it's really sharp, it's really easy to cut all the way through that leather instead of just the top layer. When we're positioning the cover on the text block, we want the inside cover to sit right at the edge of the pages. If there's any overhang at all, it'll roll and wrinkle when we fold that flap over. Now that we got the leather cut out, we can go ahead and start working on that symbol. And when I started designing this, I wanted something that looked like it might have come out of a movie. Something a little mysterious, a little creepy, and that's exactly what we got. I absolutely love it. So how are we gonna get the actual image on the leather? We can't use a tracing paper at a stylus because the leather won't hold the image. Well, the easiest way to do it is just to create a simple stencil. Don't worry about cutting out all those little bitty branches. We can freehand those in later. I'll show you how to do it. Just worry about the main trunk, the root flare, and the outside of that circle.
Now, oil tan won't hold the mark from tracing paper and a stylus, but it will hold the mark from an awl really, really well. So that's what we're gonna do. While I'm tracing it in, you'll notice that there's a black circular frame that goes all the way around. We need the outer line and the inner line to create that frame. The easiest way to do that and make sure that we maintain the correct spacing is just to use the bottom of the root flare. We've got the template on the front cover, but we also have that flap that's gonna cover up half of it. So let's go ahead and take our stencil and put the template on that flap as well. We just wanna make sure that it matches up. To do that, just fold the flap over, line your stencil up, and trace it in. Once you got the basic symbol traced in, we can start adding some color. And to do that, I'm gonna use Phoebing's Pro Dye in chocolate. I'm using a thin brush and I'm going really slow. You might wanna practice this on a scrap piece of leather before you start working on the project, just so you know how that dye reacts and moves on that specific type of leather. So a quick tip. Put a piece of paper under your hand while you're painting that dye in. That's gonna help prevent it from smudging while it's still damp.
Once we've got the basic template painted in, we can go ahead and start drawing in those additional little branches. Now I can already hear some of you out there saying, I can't draw. You can draw this. There's no right or wrong way to draw a tree branch. Just sit your reference next to the area you're working in, work in small little sections, and work from big branches down to little branches. It doesn't have to look just like the reference picture. Just get close.
The tree and the frame look really good, but it needs some atmosphere. It needs some texture to the image. So how do we do that? Well, we could go in with a paintbrush and add them in one dot at a time. First of all, that's gonna take forever. Second of all, it never looks right when you do it that way. We want something that's more random. So how do we do it? So what we're gonna do is grab your favorite background stamp, something that's got a little bit of an organic feel to it. I'm gonna be using this one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint a little bit of dye across the surface of the stamp, and then we're gonna press it straight down onto the leather. Again, practice first. When you paint the dye onto the stamp, don't use the tip of the paintbrush. Use the long, flat part. That'll help make sure that it stays on the surface of the stamp and doesn't get down in all the little cracks and crevices. With that, it's looking great, but it needs a little bit of shine to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Angelus Pewter and I'm gonna create a little bit of a light source. By painting on one side of the tree, it's gonna feel like the light's coming from that direction. You might notice that I'm using a modeling spoon instead of a paintbrush. Well, I do that sometimes because a modeling spoon doesn't flex like a paintbrush will. It also gives me a really nice thin edge and it makes the paint a little bit easier to control when we need a nice crisp line. If you wanna try the technique, just make sure you practice it before you try it on your actual project. So one of the things you might be wondering about is smudging and rub off. I think technically that's two things, but I'm sure that the pewter at some point, some of it's gonna rub off, but that's just gonna add to the look. As far as the dye, it holds really, really well. You can see the piece here on the screen. It's been dry for about 24 hours. You can see how aggressively I'm rubbing it and the paint nor the dye, either one is smudging or rubbing off. Now that the color's done, we can start looking at attaching the text block to the cover. To do that, I'm gonna start by marking out the spacing for the stitch holes, then I'm gonna be measuring the width. We want it to match as closely as possible. Once you've got that done, just punch your holes. I'm going with a four prong stitching chisel. So how are we gonna stitch the pages to the cover? We need to attach them to each other. Well, the card you see here represents a signature. A signature is just a stack of folded pieces of paper. This particular book has 12 of them. So Mr. Video Editor, if we can put some numbers on each of the holes from top to bottom, please. One, two, three, four, thank you. We're gonna start on the inside of hole number one, then we're gonna move to hole number two, that takes us back inside, and then we're gonna repeat it with hole number three and four. Then we can tie it off on the inside of the signature. 
You can do this with as many or as little of the signatures as you want to, although I wouldn't recommend going fewer than four, which is what I'm going with. The big thing though is to make sure that the first one and the last one are secured to the cover. So there is an option out there that as you stitch the signatures together, you can go through the cover and just do everything all at one time. The reason I don't like doing that, and I prefer to do it this way, is that once that text block, the book, is used up and there's no more pages in it, all I have to do is cut the stitches that bind the page deck to the, uh, to the cover, and I can lift it right out, put a new one in there, and I don't have to make a new cover for it. Last, we need a couple of ways to keep the journal closed. To do that, I'm just going to cut a couple of slits in the top of the cover as well as the bottom and then feed some lacing through it. If I had it to do over again, I'd probably put four slits on the top and four on the bottom. That way I could position the knot in the middle of the spine of the book, but this looks good too. It's just my OCD is twitching a little bit because it's off to one side. To make it easier to get the lacing through those slits, I just ran my needle through one end of the lacing, tied a knot in the thread, and that allowed me to fish it through those slots pretty easily. And with that, all that's left is take a look at the final results. Well, that will do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.